before going further let us quickly recap what all we have done in this chapter first of all we have looked at what are epidemics and how network scientists can study epidemics then we have looked at two important factors which are required for the modeling of a contagious disease and what were those factors the first one was a pathogen which was spreading and the second one was a network network on which our contagion is spreading after that we looked at a very simple process for modeling the spreading of a contagion which is the branching model branching process and one of the very interesting concept we looked in the branching process was the reproductive number r0 we have seen that when r0 was less than 1 our disease it spreads uh, sorry our disease it dies away with a probability equals to 1 and when our r0 it is greater than 1 our disease persists in the network with some positive probability and r0 was responsible was very helpful in telling us whether a disease is going to be an epidemic or not and then we looked at two little bit complicated spreading models sir model and sis model now again i'll pose a question to you and the question is like here we have seen that there is a reproductive number which if less than 1 it means that disease for sure dies away if it's greater than 1 then then Uh, it's quite sure that the not completely sure but quite sure that the disease will persist in the network this theory which we did for the branching process do you think that it will hold here and the answer can be no the answer is no why this theory doesn't hold here let's take a small example and try to figure it out say we have a network here and let's say network in in this form I'll give you a network and the edges are somewhat like this so this node is connected to two nodes on the next level and this node is connected to both the nodes on the next level and similarly this node here this node here and this this and this network goes on like this so it's an infinite network and here i tell you that initially this node and this node so these two nodes are infected initially and then i tell you that the probability of your infection is spreading is 2 by 3 So let's try to use the concept of basic reproductive number. What was our basic reproductive number? What did R zero define? R zero told us the number of secondary infections. So if a node is here and it has some neighbors here, so on an average, how many of the people in this level will be infected? That was what R zero told us. So if we look at this network, what is happening is every node. So if we look at this node here, this holds for any node in this network. if we look at this node here it is connected to this node and this node so two nodes in the next level if i look at this node it is again connected to two nodes in the next level so every node is having two children and each of these can be infected with a probability of 2 by 3 so what is my basic reproductive number it turns out to be 2 into 2 by 3 which is 4 by 3 which is greater than 1 which means that there should be a quite a high probability that my disease you know should exist on this network there should be a high probability that my disease it should persist in the network but it is not so it doesn't happen like this rather i'll show you that on this network this disease it for sure with a actually with a probability equals to 1 the disease dies away which means that our old theory of basic reproductive number is not working here in the case of sis and sir model so let's see when will this disease die away so we'll be taking this network so 
so here is the here is our network so initially these two nodes are infected let us look what is the probability that your infection doesn't come to this level so let's say that this is level 1 here this is level 2 this is level 3 and so on we are interested in looking at the probability that none of the nodes at level 2 is infected what is the probability that none of the nodes in level 2 is infected and it's actually simple to calculate so when will be a node here infected if any of these four links work out then either this node will be infected or this node will be infected right so when will none of these nodes infected when this link also fails this link also fails this link also fails and this link also fails even even if one of these links work my infection will come here to the second level so none of these links should work what is the probability that none of these links will work will work let us see So our probability of infection here was 2 by 3 for every edge, right? 2 by 3 is the probability that my infection will transmit across this edge. So what is the probability that my infection will not transmit through this edge is nothing but 1 minus 2 by 3 which is equal to 1 by 3, right? And then what is the probability that my disease doesn't get transmitted from here is again 1 by 3. So I, I, I'm going to multiply this. I am going to multiply this 1 by 3 and again 1 by 3 for the third edge and again 1 by 3 for the fourth edge. So it turns out to be 1 by 81. This 1 by 81 is the probability that my infection it doesn't get transmitted from my level 1 to level 2. 1 by 81 is the probability that my infection doesn't get transmitted from this level to this level which is actually a high probability which is on a higher side so you see there is a high probability that my infection will die away here even if one of the node gets infected here again for going for from here to here again the disease dies away with the probability 1 by 81 Again from here to here the disease dies away with the probability 1 by 81 and since it is an infinite network with a probability equals to 1 your disease it dies away from the network. So even if you see your basic reproductive number was greater than 1 what's happening is counterintuitive what is happening is with a probability equals to 1 your disease is dying away from this network.